Hello everyone. So today we would be looking into this experiment called the Stephen Boltzmann apparatus. Okay. So the basic behind the Stephen Boltzmann, Boltzmann apparatus is it's a Stephen Boltzmann law which states that the total radiant heat power emitted from a surface is, is proportional to its fourth power of its absolute temperature. Okay. So it, it could be written as like this E is equals to sigma T raised to 4. Okay. Where basically this E is the radiant energy, this one emitted from a unit area in one second. And the T over here is the temperature, absolute temperature in Kelvin. Okay. And the term, the sigma, this is famously known as the constant, the Stephen Boltzmann constant, which is uh, given by sigma equals to, it has a constant value, 5.67 into 10 raised to minus 8. That is in watts per, per meter square per Kelvin raised to 4. Okay. So this is about the Stephen Boltzmann and in this apparatus or basically in this experiment, we are going to determine the value of sigma. Okay. So let us see the experimental setup. So this is our setup. So over here, the yellow region that you can see, this is basically the uh, water heater. And this is a hemispherical chamber, okay? Where basically when uh, we would, initially we would be draining out the water, which is uh, left probably because of the last experiment which was conducted. And we will put in fresh water in this uh, set, uh, in this water boiling unit. After that, we will turn this uh, heater on and it will start heating it, okay? Now, uh, we would initially turn off this valve. This valve is basically connected to this hemisphere. Okay, so if we turn on this valve, the water will come inside this hemisphere. Okay, so in this hemisphere, on the surface of this hemisphere, there are basically four thermocouples, uh, namely T1, T2, T3 and T4. Okay, and uh, these four couples are on its surfaces. Okay. And there is a fifth thermocouple, which is this one. Okay. So as you can see, it is attached to a wire. Uh, uh, this is a thermocouple wire. And this is basically an ebonite rod. On tip of it, on tip of that, there is a thermocouple. Uh, I mean the sensor, which is sensing the temperature. So what happens is, on the bottom side, on the bottom of this uh, setup, there is, uh, I'll just, sh I'm showing the bottom view, okay. So on the bottom of this hemisphere, there is a hole, okay. This is a hole. And in this hole, this ebonite rod will fit, okay. It will go inside and touch the hemisphere, the chamber, okay. So it would be inserted from the bottom and uh, it will touch the chamber, which is, present inside it okay and accordingly we will get the temperature of uh, thermocouple t5 and t6 there is one more couple which is basically a thermocouple which is inside this chamber or basically the heating unit okay and uh, when this chamber or basically this heating unit reaches a temperature of 100 degrees celsius okay then we will start releasing the water to the hemisphere chamber okay and uh, before you know putting in the water you have to make sure that this hemisphere is empty so in order to make sure that this is empty what we are going to do is we will open up this valve so the water which is inside this uh, hemisphere will drain out okay and uh, and as you can see there is one more pipe which is coming from this way this is basically it will indicate the level so as soon as I will uh, fill this chamber with water. The water level will rise. Okay, I have to turn this off. 
the water level will rise and ultimately when it reaches its topmost height water will start flowing out and in that time i have to close this valve okay so uh, in the in digital indicators this one is the temperature here you can see the voltage here you can see the ampere and uh, here you can see that one two three four five six there are six thermocouples which i mentioned the first four is in the chamber itself in the uh, on the surface of this hemisphere container and uh, the fifth one is this one the ebonite which we are we can insert it from the bottom and the sixth one is in the boiling unit okay or the heating unit so this is all about the experimental setup and uh, once what happens once you uh, the chamber is filled once the chamber is filled then you leave it for around a minute or two so that the temperatures t1 to t4 okay the temperatures t1 to t4 becomes constant a little i mean it it will come somewhere nearby okay and one once the temperature t1 to t4 is somewhat nearby to each other that means uh, the water the heat the heating water is basically filled in the container and it is in contact with all the four thermocouples that's why it's showing the it's showing almost same temperature once it is done then you are going to insert this last thermocouple that is t5 from the bottom of the experiment uh, setup okay and uh, after that you are going to do this part that is uh, first first of all we'll take two readings okay so in the first reading you are going to note i mean this is the first reading you are going to note the temperatures t1 to t4 and after noting the temperatures what you are going to do is you are going to find the t average which is nothing but t1 plus t2 plus t3 plus t4 the whole divide by 4 so you will get a value of t average okay and uh, the initial temperature t5 when you are not plugging it on the surface okay uh, you are uh, i mean uh, you are not plugging the ebonite rod inside the experimental setup so at that time what is the temperature that is nothing but ta okay which would be ambient temperature initial ambient temperature okay so and uh, after inserting this uh, therm thermocouple t5 inside the uh, hemisphere you are going to note down the temperatures at various time intervals okay so this is uh, at 0 seconds what is the time at 10 seconds what is the time 20 40 30 and so on till 120 seconds so you are going to get a set of values of uh, temperatures with respect to time okay and after doing this after getting all this uh, readings what you are going to do is you need to find out uh, or you need to plot a graph okay so i'll show you so suppose this is our graph okay this side will show the time and this side will show the temperature okay and uh, uh, somewhat uh, the graph that you will get at suppose at 0 seconds that is somewhere over here sorry at uh, one at 10 seconds that is somewhere over here at 10 seconds the temperature would be showing somewhere in the high post and uh, at 20 somewhere little behind down 30 somewhere here and similarly till 120 i think it would be somewhere here okay so you need to join these points in order to get a graph okay and once you get this graph you have to find its slope so what the, what would the slope mean okay actually uh, you know the rate of change of uh, heat in the disk that is i'll just write it down rate of change of heat in disk can be found out by a simple formula that is m cp dt by 
dt okay the value of m and cp would be given to you uh, the value of cp is nothing but specific heat of copper which is it comes around uh, 0.38 kilojoule per kg kelvin okay but this term that is the term dt by dt the d capital t upon small t dt that you can determine by this graph okay how by its slope okay so what would be the slope of this graph the slope of this graph sorry slope of this graph is nothing but dt upon small t so how can you determine that you take any two random points in the graph suppose i take this as one of the point and somewhere here as the one of the point so i will just connect these two points like this okay so what you are going to get here is nothing but the change in temperature so it is called as dt and over here you are going to get uh, this time difference that is dt small t and correspondingly you can get the value of the temperature uh, sorry time in this axis temperature axis and over here the y axis okay so you can get the values of dt the change in uh, temperature and the change in time you can get it from here and you can get the slope of the curve and this slope you are going to use it in this formula okay so i think here till here it is very much clear now the now comes the uh, stephen boltzmann law which says that net energy radiated on the disk okay so it is net energy radiated on the disk is given by sigma area into t raised to 4 average minus t raised to 4 ambient temperature okay so this ambient temperature and average temperature we have found out over here this is the ambient temperature and this is the average temperature and the remaining part that is area area is nothing but since it's for a disk so you, uh, this would be given diameter of the disk would be given it is around 20 mm and area you can find out by pi by 40 square so you can find out all you have you are known with all these terms the only thing that you need to determine this okay now by energy balance equation what happens is by energy balance equation the rate of change of heat in the disk will be equal to the net energy radiated on the disk okay so basically the formula would come to be m cp dt upon dt equals to sigma a t raised to 4 average minus t raised to a t raised to 4 ambient okay and uh, from here you can find out sigma will be equal to m cp dt upon dt the whole upon area t average raised to 4 minus t a raised to 4 okay and from this formula you can find the value of stephen boltzmann constant that you are getting through the experiment performed okay thank you for listening this recording or hearing this experiment setup